Hello, my name is Alex Carver. I'm a senior solutions engineer with Pure Storage, focused on integrations between Pure Storage and VMware products. Today, I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of creating a user with the minimum privileges and permissions required to allow that user to register our vSphere remote plugin extensions with the vCenter. Historically, we would just have an end user go ahead and register the plugin with an administrator level. But digging into it, we found that we could go ahead and even restrict those permissions down even further in the event that someone didn't want to use an administrator user in their vCenter. So first place you need to go, you need to go ahead and go into administration and into roles. Well, first, actually, we're going to go ahead and create the user. So we're just going to create it on local SSO. We're going to call it extension register. Give it the password that is needed. Okay, and we're not going to really put anything else in there. We're going to go ahead and add it. So now we have a basic user. What we're also going to go ahead and do is we're going to create a new role of plugin registration user. I guess that'd be good. So the ones that we actually need to get in here are the ability to register the extension and unregister the extension, just in case you wanted to remove the plugin from the vCenter. Along with that, you also need to go ahead and enable the ability to validate the session because the user is going to have to log into the vCenter and validate the session that it is logging into with. So now with this user right here, we can see that it has those privileges, register extension, unregister extension, and validate session. Now we need to go ahead and associate this user that we just created with the vCenter and give it that permission. Okay, and these for local, register, and we're gonna give it the role there it is. Plugin registration user. Okay. So now that we have this new user that we created, the extension register, it has that role in the vCenter, we can go ahead and register the plugin. And so that'll be the next thing we want to go ahead and do. Now with our user created, we'll go ahead and log into the appliance VM and we'll go ahead and register the vCenter with the plugin. The plugin is registered with the commands from the pure plugin commandlet. Specifically, we will be using the register command, or positional argument, that is. And here we'll provide the host which will be the vCenter's IP address or FQDN. And then the user will be the one that we just created. We could provide the plugin FQDN as well. Otherwise, we can leave that off. Okay, there's the thumbprint. Confirm it is correct. And there the plugin is now registered. And we did it with a user that we created with the minimum permissions and privileges in order to be able to register the extension and only do that. And we'll go ahead and go back to the vCenter UI, and here we can see that the plugin has been successfully deployed. Sure enough, there is our plugin. We click on it, and we'll see that 
we have the ability here as the default administrator to go ahead and start running through some of these workflows. So that we can go ahead and add an array if we needed to, or configure and authenticate with Pier 1 and so forth. One thing that I want to make note of as well, though, is that when the plugin extensions are registered and the user's logged in, one of the things that the plugin will end up doing is adding a specific set of privileges to vCenter for the different users. By default, the administrator is going to get all of the privileges from the pure storage added here. And if your user is already logged in, it may not automatically populate with these ones since the extension register user we created didn't have the permissions to update privileges and permissions in vCenter. And so you may need to go ahead and log out of vCenter and then log back in, and then you'll be able to get through those workflows. It is something that I do want to make mention of that I needed to do in order to make sure those privileges were correctly populated when I went through this myself. Now, if your vCenter had already had uh, if your vCenter had already been installed or if your vCenter already had a remote plugin deployed on it and you're just wanting to change which user registers the extensions within the appliance, then you should be fine there without any issues. And that's a process to go ahead and create a user within vCenter that has the minimum permissions and privileges needed in order to register the remote plugins extensions with the vCenter server. Thank you for your time and for watching.